Hello, Doc. Good to see you in town. Good to see you, Lloyd. Listen, I want to talk to you about a petition. Petition? Yes, I... Uh, dozens of good citizens just like yourself to try to convince Leland Stanford he should run for the Senate. Leland made a good governor, should make a great senator. If you're in town tonight, why don't you have dinner with me? I'd love to, but I'm going back tonight. I'd... How are the boys? What are they doing with themselves? I'm asking myself the same question. Oh, boy, wait till you see what I got, Murdoch. Let's see it. This is a Winchester. Not just any Winchester. It's one of 1,000. Oh, the boss is gonna like that. You think so? I sure hope so. The clerk, he had a hold on it, but the other fellow was a day late, so I talked him into selling it to me. But isn't that beautiful? What do you think, brother? That's not bad. Not bad. You know what this is? This is a collector's item. You know what I'm gonna have done? You see this Lancer L? I'm gonna trace it right here and have a silver L made for it. Where's some chalk? Well, now that's a pretty good gift, Chuck. But I wanna show you a gift. A real one, from the heart. Take a look at this. A hand-painted stereopticon. Stereopticon. Leave it to you to get something called a stereopticon. It's a little gadget they made up in the East. Now you take this right here, and my friend, you can be anywhere. What do you mean, anywhere? Well, you can be in Spain, England, India, China. Yeah. Hey. Nice, huh? Look at that. That's enough. I like it. Oh, Murdoch, he's going to love this. Johnny, you, uh, notice anything? Till he got his new boots. First ones in five years. The others were getting so I could step on a dime and feel if it was head or tails. Well, those must have cost you a pretty penny. Well, a half a year of hoarded up money, an hour of dickering, and $20. That's a lot of boot. Well, you wear them in good health. And now I'm gonna show you what I got for Murdoch. She cost a pretty penny, too. She? Yeah. Yes. Look at that, would you? Hey, look at that, a pig. Not any pig. That's a prize-winning sow. Sow? What's Murdoch going to do with that? You know, Jelly, I've been thinking about that. I didn't want to say anything, but for all that money, could have bought a good horse. Yeah, maybe a fine dog. Uh, it just shows how ignorant you are. First place a sow's a sight smarter than any horse. Or a dog. Jelly. Well, Arabella isn't just a sow. She's special. Arabella? Yes, Arabella. She's a pedigree Duroc Jersey sow. <laughs> now, you wouldn't know it, but there aren't very many like her in the West. I believe it. And she's going to be the mother of a whole herd of meat producers. You can just go ahead and laugh. She's going to have the right last laugh. Right, Arabella? Jelly, I tell you what I'll do. I'll help you take Arabella home tomorrow, all right? Right after I see the silversmith. Fine, I'm going to need you. Let's go have a beer first. Give me that blanket. Um, that's a good idea. Jelly, hand me my hat. Hey. Come here, Scott. Help me with it. Just enough money left out of these boots buy you one more round. Gentlemen, I think we did it. Since this is the first chance we've had to surprise Murdoch on his birthday, I think we've done a good job. He's gonna love my stereopticon. 
Oh, he's gonna love my rifle. Well, oh, he's gonna like your Just rifle. Just wait till he sees the love. Ah, you mean your pig? Get out of here. <laughs> Take it easy. Get your breath. I'm Trina. Trina Mason. I live up in that mountain. Trina, I'm Scott Lancer. I have something to sell here. I painted it. I need very much some money for... Well, if you don't like that one, I have another one here. Now, uh, wait a minute now. You almost sold me this one. <gasps> now, what's your trouble, girl? Please. The money's so important. All right, Trina. Good job, Trina. Very good job of setting me up. No. Back to the cabin now, Trina. Take her out of here. That's very considerate. Robbery's all right. But don't let the girl witness a killing. In fact, I'd like to buy it. It ain't for sale. You can go. Now.
didn't set you up. I know. I apologize. Here, take this. Take it. You didn't have a chance to pay for that painting. No, no, lady. You have a lot of talent. Do you really think so? That's beautiful. Thank you. Tell me something, Trina. Why is that money so important to you? I have to get to Mumford Crossing. To buy a horse so I can get to San Francisco. No, wait a minute. That's a long, hard ride to San Francisco. I know some good men who couldn't make that trip. I can. I have to. What are you running away from, Trina? My brothers won't let me go. You mean they're your brothers? Ever since our parents died, they've kept me here. They won't even let me ride into town to get supplies with them. They'll bring me what I want, but they won't let me out. Trina, that does make sense. Why? I mean... Animals. Please help me. Take me away, just to Mumford Crossing. I can get a horse there and ride to San Francisco. When I get enough money, I can go and see Venice, Rome, Paris, all the places I've ever wanted to go. Please. Please help me. I want to see all the beautiful places. Trina, I'm taking you out of here. No, you ain't. Gun, please. I'll see you to your horse. What about her? You got nothing to do with her. We take care of Trina. Get! Why don't you cry? Because I'm coming back for you. I'm coming back for her. back to San Francisco? He didn't kill her! Go on. Go on, you lie pretty well. No, no, no lie. No lie. John and me came back from a hunting trip six years ago. Mom and Dad dead. Rheumatic fever. Trina lived on. 
she doesn't know. But it left her with a... a weak heart. Well, if what you say is true, then you can't keep her locked up here. Because you're the ones that are killing her. You're killing her dream. Oh, if we can keep her here, there's hope. Hope she can grow stronger as she grows older. But she's a bright girl. I mean, surely she must know about the dizziness. Yeah, and shortness of breath. She just shrugged it off. But look at her. We're just animals. We are drawing her hatred. But we are not going to bury her beside our ma and pa. Maybe there's a way. I believe if we get enough of these signatures, we can persuade our ex-governor to run for the Senate. Heard tell he's a good man. The best. With California growing the way it is, that's what we need. Our brother John had signed. But he's in Sacramento. Getting some more painting supplies and, and some canvas for Trina. Stereotica. Yes. Isn't it beautiful? Would you like to see the picture? I like, uh, I like better what I see on the wood. Oh, thank you. Venice was never more beautiful. What is Venice? Look, look, and here's London and, and Rome and Paris. Easy, Trina. Easy. I'm going to visit all of them just, just as soon as I'm stronger. Isn't that right? That's right, honey. Then I can see the whole world right here. A sketch. Is it for sale? I'm going to paint him. I could never part with him. It's very lifelike. Do you know him? Never so well as right now. I sketched him from memory. Well, he's much more wonderful than this. He came by and left me the stereoptican. He's much more wonderful. to finish off of that thing. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start saving my money and buy it off of it. <laughs> it's not for sale. Come on, if, if I was to give you cash money right now, what'd you take for it? Oh, I'd take a million dollars. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start saving. You wouldn't sell your pig, would you, Jelly? Sow. And you're right, I wouldn't sell her for less than a million. You're on me first. I know, I saw it. Jim, you can't die here like this. You mean drunk? In a common shootout? Somebody get a doctor. What's it going to do to him, Jim? You tell our father, I'll see him. In hell. No. Doc's on his way. So is he. My condolences, Miss Mumford. Thank you. Ma'am. Give me a rose. Just 
Just one checkup. Did Arabella bed it down? Oh, she's sleeping sweet as a saint. Gonna have to bunk with me tonight. Oh, no, I'm bunking down with Arabella. I don't know any Arabellas in Mumford's Crossing. She's his pig. Now, we run a nice, clean, respectable town. <laughs> well, she just happens to be a nice, clean, respectable sow. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Clean, respectable. Sir, uh, the rifle. It's a one of 1,000 Winchester, isn't it? That's right. Uh, I know what you paid for that rifle. Uh, would you care to sell it? At a profit, of course. Oh, no, ma'am. Are you looking for protection? No. No, I just want that rifle. Well, I'm sorry. It's not for sale. Double your money. No, ma'am. Triple it. No, it's not for sale. One thousand dollars. Jelly, now, would you sell your pig? Uh, Sal, uh, no, not on your tin type, but... Maybe... Sorry, ma'am. Thank you. Hello again. Well, hello again. You can put that away. Oh, this was my room. Oh, no, you, you checked out, remember? Go ahead. You can use it. You're nice. I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Well, I could go back to the saloon if uh, you wanted me to. Why? I'll be dressed and gone in a minute. I, uh, I just decided to freshen up before my trail ride. Beautiful lady like you. Well, you shouldn't be riding tonight. Do you think I'm beautiful? I know you're beautiful. <laughs> well, well, I could go on back to the stable and sleep with Jelly, I guess. I wouldn't put you out. I'll ride on. Can't let you do that. Well, it's easy. The trail is easy if you know the way. Just follow the signs. You looking at my rifle? I, uh... I still want to buy it. It's not for sale. I hear there's nothing a man owns that doesn't have a price. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So? The price is too high for you. I mean, the rifle's just not for sale. I'm sorry you feel that way. Mm -hmm. 
Your gun belt. A thousand dollars. Small fortune. And you go safely on your way. That uh, rifle means too much to me, ma'am. Well, then we'll have to haul you in the town, boy. You were trespassing. You're trying to steal Mr. Mumford's rifle. You know, I heard the great James A. Mumford collected all this land and those guns. He's not going to collect my rifle, though. Take the trespasser. He's a thief. Yeah, go ahead. Take me. I can prove that gun's mine. You're going to have to kill me to keep it. And I don't think you're capable of that. Take him. Teach him a lesson. Dump him off Mumford property. Teach him a lesson so he'll never come back, so he'll never say it's his. Rifles above your mantle, ma'am. Father's mantle. Try to understand. Try me if my brain works. I told Father he'd be given that rifle. A gift from his son. You mean your brother? The one that was killed in the street, huh? Half-brother. Does that make a difference? No, 
Except James A. Mumford's all father. Deep down, he's all father. Jim didn't know. Or didn't care to know. Neither do I. Look, I was the one that put the hold on that rifle in Sacramento. Jim was supposed to pick it up. Small world, huh? Small, ugly world. Small, ugly people. He didn't claim it because... Well, for two days, he didn't leave the saloon at the crossing. So he got himself drunk and then got himself killed. You know, I think you think more of that rifle than you do your own brother. Maybe I do. Jim's dead. Nothing's going to give meaning to that. But that rifle could mean a lot of things. Look, your uh, father, James A. Mumford, he's got a whole wall full of rifles. What's one more? He doesn't have one from his son. He doesn't have anything from his son except that rifle. A gift of love. A gift of love. Father bought Jim everything. But the one thing he couldn't buy was his son's love. And you've got the story of Jim's death all wrong. I suppose you got a better one worked out to tell your father. Yes, I do. Jim went to Sacramento and he picked up the rifle. He was returning with it to bring one spark of happiness to his father when he was ambushed by some saddle tramp who robbed him and fled. <laughs> oh, brother. Then your father goes into town and finds out what really happened. Father hasn't left his land for two years, and he won't. He's too proud to be seen the way he is now. He's blind. Well, if he's blind, one rifle from another won't make any difference, will it? If you live with guns all your life, it will. You can feel it. You don't believe me. Yeah, I believe you. First, you tried to buy my rifle with money, then body. <laughs> Need that, ma'am. some uh, firewood, sir. I don't know your voice. You're new here, aren't you? Yes. Know what this is? Sure, it's a Winchester. I believe it's one of 1,000. Yeah. At last, hard hide on someone. What else you know about it? Well, it was stamped by Mr. Winchester. Should be tenderly cared for, like an art treasure. It looks sturdy, sir. With your permission, I'll oil it down for you and rub it with a chamois. Yeah. Take it! Hold it. You don't know everything about the rifle. It's hard. So. Yes, 
How old are you? Never mind. It doesn't matter. My son, being 25, did I tell you that? No. When I should have been raising my son, I was raising cattle. All his life, I, I didn't take the time to tell him I love him. But he knew. My son didn't have to say it. He knew. We loved each other. A strong, unspoken love between men. Son, where are you? I'm here. His last words were of me. My daughter told me. Take care of that cold. Hello? Find a little something. Yes, stranger? Uh, ma'am, I got a sick sow. Well, how can I help? Maybe you have some belladonna? I have. Sure, thank you, ma'am. Oh, uh, could I pay you for it? You can. I'm um, uh, sorry, all my folding money went for my new boots and Arabella there, but you're sure welcome to all the change. I'll take it. All right, Arabella. You're gonna be better in no time. Anything I can do? No, ma'am, you've done enough already. Nature and nature's remedies gonna get her on her feet in no time. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm J.B. Hoskins of the Lancer Ranch. Mrs. Moran. Robbie, Paul, and Melissa. Uh, you and your man have a fine family. No man. The good Lord took him two years ago spring plowing time. I'm sorry. Ways of the Lord. Robbie, get out of there. It's all right, ma'am. He's no bother, and Arabella wouldn't hurt us all. I think she's cute. Me, too. She's trembling. She isn't feeling too well. Poor pig. Sal. Can we take it inside where it's warm? I'll put my blanket over. Me, too. I get to, too. Oh, come on, please. Come on. Well, wait a minute. It's up to the ma'am. She's welcome. Well, I appreciate that, ma'am. So I thought I'd mix business and pleasure. See an old friend and maybe get a couple of extra signatures for that petition. You're welcome on both accounts, Murdoch. Go on, convince me. Well, what's the matter? I was just looking at your newest edition. Yeah. The one of 1,000. Go ahead. Heft it. Perfect balance. 
perfect in every respect. Perfect. My son gave it to me before he died. I'm sorry, I... Uh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry for both of you. Thank you, Mr. Lancer. Some called him wild. He was. But they didn't understand the other side of him. He and I understood each other. You know, you got sons. Yes, I've got sons. Fine boy, Murdoch. His gift will always remind me. I'm sorry, but... I've gotten some fingerprints on it. Soup's a little thin, but we got beans coming up. And your flour helped. Oh, well, I'd sure like to help more, but... Well, my new boots and the sow took all the money I had. Oh, the boys will trap another squirrel one of these days. Spice up the pot. Maybe the garden will come up this year. Maybe the hoppers won't hit. Maybe six months from now we can all look back on this. Maybe it'll be a bountiful fall. By that time, we'll be starved dead. Paul, don't talk like that. Mr. Hoskins, he always exaggerates. We won't all be dead. Which one? Melis, don't think about such things. Well, which ones? Dear Mr. Hoskins, any friend of his is truly welcome in this house. You're very kind. I'm afraid we poured our hearts out to him about the drought and all. And the kids so spindly. Starving we were. And then Uncle Jelly um, showed up with the cell, and we had a windfall. Windfall? Food. But he didn't have to do it. We're glad he did, of course. At least we'll live through the winter. Here, sir. Help yourself to the pork chops. Bless Mr. Hoskin. You bet. Yeah. I thought you were going to be late for your own birthday. Well, I had a few delays along the way. Where is everybody? Well, Johnny's inside washing up. How'd the petition go? First rate. Where's Jelly? Jelly hasn't gotten back yet. I thought he'd be back before me. I didn't expect presents from either one of you. Thought we had a gentleman's agreement. So you didn't raise gentlemen.
I got something for you. I got one over here, too. you can do with it. I'm not too good at picking out gifts. Oh, Johnny, no, that's uh, a thing like this. You could use it for well, lots of different, a belt buckle, you know, or a paperweight or... Hey, it's Jelly. He's back. Come on, Murdoch. Oh, boy, where do you see what he got you? Come on, Murdoch. Well, I am. Um, Hey, come on, we need you. But I just want to get down to the bunkhouse first. I don't want Murdoch to see me. I don't want him to see yeah, what? Hey. You gotta give me a present. Come oh, on, no, not yet. Wait, don't. Come on, show me a present. Show me. Hello, Jelly. Boss, sir. Now's the time. Give him the present. Oh, leave him alone. Leave him alone, boy. Jelly, look, when you feel like it, come back in and have supper with us, huh? Thank you, boss. that for a birthday present. <laughs> Jelly! I couldn't be more pleased. Well, well, come on in the house. Let's celebrate, huh? Happy birthday, boss. sold him, didn't you? I saw those kids. Come on, let's get those feet warm. Oh, 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 oh.